This A-level chemistry standard level IB video is on all things to do with carbon. So you met carbon a lot at GCSE, both in the form of graphite and diamond. And we're just building on that really and adding a couple of other what we call allotropes, which is graphene. Some of you may already come across graphene and also C60 fullerene. So I just threw in a technical term, which is allotrope. You must learn the definition of this. Different structural modifications of the same element. So obviously in this case, we're talking about the same element each time, which is carbon but it manifests itself completely differently depending on which structure we're talking about. Carbon is one of the most interesting elements in the whole of the periodic table. <laughs> what am I saying? Um, famously, diamond is used in rings. It's exceptionally expensive. We know it's extremely hard. It's been used as the tips for the tips of drill bits for hundreds of years. Graphite, you find that as the lead in your pencil, so it's a drawing material. Um, so it has loads of different forms, and that's really what an allotrope is. So we're going to start by looking at the similarities between some of these structures. And we're going to start by looking at graphite, diamond, and graphene collectively, because these are all covalent network solids and what this means is that the atoms are held together by covalent bonds which we know to be exceptionally strong at GCSE you might have met another giant covalent structure called silicon dioxide which is sand again a 3d structure made up of many strong covalent bonds the crucial thing to notice here is the allotrope C60 fullerene is completely different. It is not a covalent network solid. It is in fact molecular. And so we'll see very different properties arising from this fact. So let's start by looking more closely at the allotrope graphite. So I've just said that it's a covalent network solid. It's crucial to note that in graphite, the carbon atoms are arranged in layers and these layers are actually hexagonal rings so six-sided shapes which contain the carbon atoms the fact that they're arranged in layers means that we have have some weak intermolecular forces and at this level we're going to call those London forces remember these are weak so they're easy to break and these London forces are responsible for graphite's use as a lubricant because these layers can simply slide off of each other, which enables graphite to also be used as the lead in pencils because those layers slide off onto your paper, producing that grey smudge that you can then read. The cat's meowing. The cat Martin and I always sit here looking at each other going, you open the door. No, you open the door. You should open the door. You should open the door. You should open the door. I have far too many things on my lap. You should open the door. Lyra. Kitten, open the door. Lyra. How are those opposable thumbs coming along? Come on, evolution. Lyra. So let's look more closely at the structure of graphite. Now notice that each carbon atom adopts trigonal planar geometry. And that, that means that each carbon atom is bonded to three others.
and remember from geometry check out my video on drawing molecular shapes if you're not clear on this but you need to know that trigonal planar actually produces a bond angle of 120 degrees and because each carbon atom is bonded to three others we say that it has a coordination number like omg oh, oh my god It's important to notice with this coordination number that what that means is the fourth electron is effectively delocalized. So it's free to move within the graphite structure. And that's actually the reason why graphite can conduct electricity. As with other covalent network solids, it obviously has a high melting point. And that's again due to the many strong covalent bonds which require a lot of energy to break. It's also hard, not as hard as diamond obviously, but it is extremely hard and it is insoluble. So it does not dissolve in common solvents such as water or alcohol. Taking a closer look at diamond now, another covalent network solid. Unlike graphite, where each carbon atom is bonded to three other carbon atoms, in diamond you find that each carbon atom is bonded to four. And we call this, remember, a tetrahedral shape. Being tetrahedral, you should know that the bond angle is 109.5 degrees. And as such, the coordination number here is four. Now, diamond is famous because obviously it's very shiny. It's also extremely hard. And it's actually the hardest substance known to man or woman, for that matter. And that's due to this coordination number of four. So these covalent bonds are interlocked, creating an incredibly hard surface. And this explains its use as a drill or a polishing tool has a very high melting point 4827 degrees celsius and notice that that coordination number of four means that there are no free or delocalized electrons explaining why diamond can't conduct electricity It's also insoluble in common solvents. Next up, graphene, which again is a covalent network solid. Unlike graphite and diamond though, it doesn't have a giant 3D structure. It's actually a 2D crystal. The first ever of its kind to be discovered and it's made up of a single planar sheet of carbon atoms arranged hexagonally. It's so thin this sheet because it's actually only one atom in thickness. Notice with graphene, similarly to graphite, it has a coordination number of three, which means that each carbon atom is bonded to three others. And due to this, it means it has delocalized electrons. Now, the combination of it having delocalized electrons and the fact that it's incredibly thin means that it is an excellent, absolutely amazing conductor of electricity and heat. Now, as you can tell, graphene and graphite are exceptionally closely related. And indeed, if you had one millimetre thickness of graphite, this would actually be the equivalent of three million sheets of graphene. 
So basically, when you prize graphite apart, it essentially becomes graphene. And if you roll up a graphene sheet, it forms a carbon nanotube. And if you roll it up into a sphere, it becomes fullerene, which looks like a football. Scientists are extremely excited by graphene due to its incredible properties, so its excellent electrical and thermal conductivity, the fact that it's extremely strong, it's also flexible and can be transparent. And that's why it can be used very widely in technology. So its uses include LCD screens or touch screens in mobiles, And it's also used in space, basically, because of its low weight or its low density, high strength, it makes it very suitable for sending into space. Let's now take a look at C60 fullerene, which compared with things like graphite and diamond is a far more recent discovery. And actually this recent discovery was discovered in 1985 and the scientists went on to actually win the Nobel Prize in Chemistry, which is a pretty damn big deal. In 1996. What they noticed was that the carbon atoms were arranged in closed shells. And that the number of carbon atoms varied which meant you actually ended up with either C60 and C70 with far more C60s being made. C60 fullerene, by the way, isn't found naturally in the way that carbon is found within the Earth's crust. It has to be made or manufactured. And the way in which you do this is you vaporize carbon and when it's condensed, in an atmosphere of an inert, remember that inert means unreactive gas, that's when you form the C60. The C60 molecule has a really distinct shape and as I've already said, it looks similar to a football or soccer ball if you're from America. And found within here are 20 hexagonal surfaces and 12 pentagonal, so five-sided shaped surfaces. Now, this football shape has a specific name. It's a geodesic dome, which I wouldn't worry too much about. But the guy that first named it, his name was Buckminster Fuller, hence why C60 fullerene is often known as the Buckminster fullerene, or, as I'm going to write here, buckyballs. Looking more closely at its structure, therefore, I've already told you it's not a covalent network solid. Instead, it is molecular. So although within the molecule, you find, as you would expect, covalent bonds, between the molecules, you have weak intermolecular forces, which we call London forces at this level. These are easy to break, which means it has a lower melting point when compared with graphene, diamond and graphite. Similarly, with the other allotropes of carbon, you find that it's mostly insoluble, especially in common solvents such as water. However, in some organic solvents, e.g. benzene, you find that it does dissolve and it can form coloured solutions and that obviously depends on the solvent in which it has been dissolved. So sometimes it can turn brown, sometimes it turns magenta. Next up concerning its electrical conductivity, although there are delocalised electrons, 
Unfortunately, the, these are held within the molecule. So they're not free to move freely within the structure and therefore it doesn't conduct electricity unlike graphene and graphite. The reason why scientists are so excited about C60 fullerene is its ability to be used in everyday life and in technology. Because of the shape of C60 fullerene, it's effectively a small cage and within that cage can be placed things like drugs or genes which can then be used to deliver that drug or gene into the human body. And even more excitingly, the fullerenes have the ability to fit within the active site of protease enzymes found within HIV. And in this way, obviously, they inhibit the action of that protease, meaning that the HIV enzyme can't function as well and therefore stopping the HIV in its processes. So C60 fullerene has proven an amazing technology in the fight against HIV which is obviously an incredibly dangerous disease. So I hope I've given you an in-depth look at the allotropes of carbon. It's really important that you learn their different properties so whether they conduct electricity or not, whether they have high melting points, why graphite can be used as a lubricant, why C60 fullerene can be used to deliver drugs and really get to grips with this. I hope you found this video helpful guys. I'll be back soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe and take care.